I would say master or at least get very good at one channel for exposure. Some people are great at press. Some people are great at social. Uh, some people have a background in photography or videography. I would say leverage whatever you're good at and, and really just you know, double down on that. I wanted to really go after the YouTube tech influencer community. And about three years ago, it was, you know, it was there, but it was still kind of budding and, and, and growing. Now it's just massive. Uh, and it's much harder to get to these reviewers, but three years ago, they were pretty accessible. And I found reviewers with channels that were uh, very professional, but maybe hadn't blown up quite yet. They had 5K to 100K subscribers, but they were making great content. And it was pretty obvious if they kept doing what they were doing, they would be you know, in the million plus range in a few years. So we connected with folks like that and sent out a lot of free samples. Uh, and we had a lot of willingness to, to cover our brand and our product. There's certainly demand for our products. We, we do get a, a lot of visitors to our site and potential customers uh, from these, these Asian countries. Fulfilling the goods is a, is a challenge. Setting up fulfillment in Hong Kong is certainly doable and a lot of companies are in fact doing it. Offering affordable, reliable shipping into these different Southeast Asian marketplaces is a bit more of a challenge. I think contrary to maybe what you read uh, in tech publications, uh, there's a lot of people right now who are just buying their first substantial set of headphones or earphones. So they're just making that first upgrade from their stock earbuds that came with their phone. And it's a massive, massive addressable market that I think not a lot of audio companies are really focusing on. So, you know, there's a big movement happening in wearable technology and it's very interesting, but I still believe that's a very niche market. Uh, so, yeah, again, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening, but there's a lot of different customers to appeal to. There's the sort of pro audio, audiophile producer market that it's probably not going to go to wireless anytime soon. They want the fidelity and the quality and uh, you know they have a lot of gear that requires a, a cabled input. So you know you hear the buzzwords or the buzz phrases of you know wireless is the future and to a certain extent it is but there's still a, you know a huge market of people who who uh, you know who need high quality uh, cabled audio gear. There's this whole hearable technology movement. There's a handful of companies that are, are, are doing that. Uh, and a lot of it centers around true wireless. So you've probably heard that before, TWS, true wireless. That's the Apple AirPods. And any, anytime Apple does anything, you know, it, it, it tends to indicate uh, a seismic shift in what's happening. So the AirPods are really ushering in uh, a... I guess a new consumer expectation that things are going to go true wireless. I would say that the bleeding edge is true wireless technology and hearable technology, which is uh, really taking the environment around you and being able to augment it. So being able to filter out certain sounds and frequencies and really, you know, control the sonic environment around you. So I think we'll we'll see companies trying to make hearable devices that resemble, you know, tiny computers in your ears. Thank you.